In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about electrical engineering, especially if you're someone who's just getting into it or you're already in the degree and you don't know if you should keep going or not, and you're looking at other options. And everything you need to know within electrical engineering can really be broken down seven things. And these include some skills you need, some classes you're going to take, how to deal with professors, things of that nature. And I'm going to go over these in this video. So first, let's talk about skills. The first thing you need to know is that there are two skills that are very, very important. They're technical skills, skills involving how your brain works, and that they are not math and physics, they are curiosity and problem solving. Basically, if you don't enjoy solving problems, you should run away as fast as possible from engineering. If you don't believe like you are a curious person, you're not someone who's asking why, and you're not trying to learn more about things, especially the field of engineering you're interested in, you should probably also run away. That is because during the entire degree in engineering, you're gonna be hammered with problems to solve. And the only way you can solve them is if you can be curious about them and curious about the answer and curious about why the answer is that way. If you don't have these two things, then you're gonna be so frustrated and you're gonna be in so much pain. Now, problem solving is a skill anyone can develop. Curiosity, on the other hand, I don't know, but I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I think some people are just more curious than others for whatever reason. And if you know how to cultivate your curiosity, that's gonna help you very well. However, even if you know that other people are more curious than you, just whatever level of curiosity that you have, if you can just cultivate it and maximize it, that's still gonna be way better someone else who's more curious who's not utilizing their curiosity so i don't want you to sit here and doubt oh my god am i curious or not but just to think okay am i curious about things do i like understanding how things work do i like thinking about how things operate if you at least have that then you should be more than fine because you're going to use that to solve the problem so the problem solving there's just no other way around now the second thing you need to know about electrical engineering is that imagination is required electrical engineering in my opinion is the most difficult objectively out of all the different paths of electrical engineering for one very simple reason is that a lot of the electrical engineering concepts are more abstract and require a lot of imagination. And a big contrast to that usually is, is mechanical engineering. And yes, although mechanical engineering has concepts like uh, thermodynamics and heat transfer, which are a bit more abstract. And a lot of mechanical engineering, you're dealing with mechanics. You're dealing with physical objects that you can touch and interface with. And you're trying to study, okay, what's going to happen if I like punch this thing? What's going to happen if I drop it? What's going to happen if I drag it across my hand? How much heat is it going to generate in my hand? Generally, it's things that you can visualize. Now, the problem with electrical engineering is you're dealing with electrical charges and electromagnetic fields. These are invisible. These are things you cannot see with your naked eye. Even with a microscope, we have a hard time seeing these things very, very clearly. Basically, charges and waves are made up of energy and energy unless it's in the visible spectrum are not going to be visible to your human eye so again this is something i'm not going to sugarcoat one advantage for example me personally i had is that i was able to imagine things i could close my eyes and draw pictures and do things like that in my head and now you don't necessarily need that but if you have that it's definitely going to help now again that is a skill that you can develop anyone can improve that but if that's something you're not interested in doing if you're not interested in sitting down and thinking about things that are abstract such as charges or fields, for example, then I would strongly encourage against electrical engineering because it's just not gonna be fun. Now, a quick note on that, a big misconception is that electrical engineering is not hands-on. That could not be further from the truth. Electrical engineering is very hands-on. For example, I have this sleep tracking ring over here. And as you can see, it has a bunch of sensors inside of it. And there are classes where you go in the lab and you use breadboards and you and you connect wires and sensors and resistors, capacitors, doing things like that together. So there's definitely a lot of hands-on. In my current job at NASA, I'm definitely doing things that are a lot uh, of hands-on work. So there's definitely plenty of that. Just understand that there's gonna be a lot of abstract stuff that needs to happen in your brain for you to fully understand the concepts. Fourth thing you need to know is that even though each year gets harder, it actually gets easier. And what I mean by that is because freshman year usually has the least amount of coursework. It is the least difficult in terms of the topics, but the problem is your brain is not developed for that level of rigor. Usually after freshman year, you get destroyed and you learn how to develop study habits and whatnot. And by sophomore year, you catch up and by junior year, you catch up and, and, and so on. So even though, for example, junior year, the classes are a lot more difficult than freshman year, freshman year is still gonna be the hardest year because you're simply not prepared and you're not as good at sitting down and studying understanding things. You don't have the mental stamina or the physical stamina, for example, to sit down and study for extended periods of time. Which speaking of, if you don't plan on sitting down and studying for extended periods of time or solving problem sets, sets for extended period of time, you should not study engineering. One piece of advice is when you sit down and do these problem sets, you should definitely not have your phone near you. You should throw it in another room or put it somewhere else because these problems are gonna be very difficult and boring. Even if you have the curiosity, it's just gonna require you to sit down and be like, hmm, how do I solve this? How do I actually go about this? And you need to be bored and frustrated. And the human brain is wired in that there's a tendency where the moment you get bored or frustrated, you just grab your phone for a quick dopamine hit and you just go on Instagram or go on TikTok. So I will say that I'm very, very lucky because I'm 27 years old. My generation did not have that problem as bad. When I was a junior in college, I did have Instagram and I did have like all these things next to me, but I would still put my phone away. I think now has gotten a lot harder and the people who are really gonna win are the people who can just put their phone away or learn how to deal with their phones. For example, I use an app called Opal to block 
apps on my phone during certain times. And I have, there's another app called Dromo. It's a bit cheaper, probably more student friendly. But anyway, this is a little bit of a tangent, but yeah, you need to sit down and study. You need to sit down and do the work. If you're not going to do that, then you're screwed. Fifth thing that you need to know is that there are a lot of subfields and there's a lot of different areas within electrical engineering that you can study. So if you're someone who, for example, you don't like to be super imaginative and you don't like to think about fields and waves and things like that all day, then I would strongly advise, for example, you don't specialize in either the theoretical side of things, that the research side of things, or for example, in telecommunications or anything electromagnetic physics oriented. These are things that are a lot more abstract. On the other hand, for example, something like power systems or something like circuits is a lot more tangible since you can draw the diagrams and you can see them and you can deal with large numbers such as just volts, currents, power. And usually that's a lot more friendly. And by the way, like this is not to say, oh my God, you're cool if you can imagine things. You're not cool if you... Like being, being a human in life is all a game of figuring out what your strengths are leaning towards them, improving them, and just making the most out of them. So there's a lot of stuff I know how to do that other people cannot do. There's a lot of stuff other people can do that I have no idea how to do. What makes me more successful than other people, or at least objectively successful in my in my own terms, like let's say whether, I don't know, career or within engineering, is I am ruthless about constantly asking myself, what am I good at? What am I not good at? And making the decision of, sh shall I improve on the thing I'm not good at? Or shall I just take the L on it, outsource it something else or whatnot? That's something that's very, very important. And you need that to decide on which subfield you're going to get into. Now, again, I mentioned a couple. I mentioned like telecommunications, circuits. I mentioned power systems. I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about those technical subfields. I'm going to address that in point number seven. But before I do that, I want to talk about point number six, which is very, very important, which is very often it's a lot about who you know, not what you know, but not because of what you think. There's this misconception that, oh my God, networking is more important than knowledge. And yes, while networking can help you get an internship and whatnot, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to embarrass yourself in that internship. And yes, you can learn, you can pick up and whatnot. But I, I think it's really m misconception that some people are like, uh, networking is more important. It's more about who you know, not what you know. And I intentionally use that phrase to correct it. It's actually about both what you know and who you know. So you have two jobs to do in engineering school. One is to learn as much as possible about you, what you are curious about and what you would like to do with your life. Two is to find all the other people who have either done that thing or are doing it right now and talk to them and learn from them and learn from their experiences. That's something I was always very, very good at doing is I would always try to reach out to upperclassmen or professors or TAs and I would literally just go and ask, hey, why did you decide to do engineering? Why did you do this thing? Why are you studying power systems? Why are you a professor in communication systems? Why are you doing research in this area? And it would come out of genuine curiosity. Again, point number one that I brought, most important one, is people would see my genuine curiosity is I genuinely want to learn more about them and why they did, they did that. And they would tell me, oh, I didn't do power because of this. I didn't do telecommunications because of that. So by the time I was a sophomore or a junior in, 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 uh, in undergrad, I already knew a lot more than probably like a lot of engineers who are like few years into their career. And I even remember reading a LinkedIn post where some guy was like, oh, like, I don't know, don't do a PhD because you're gonna, I don't know, work a few years in industry to realize it's not for you. I knew industry was not for me after like one internship right? <laughs> because in that internship, I went and I asked everyone all sorts of questions. So there's two things that I did really well that I want you to do as well as get as good as possible at what you do, learn all the ends and outs, learn the technical stuff, work on projects, do all the other stuff that I talk about in my other videos. But more importantly is leverage other people, ask other people for advice, ask other people for help. And you'd be shocked. Most people want to talk about themselves. Most people want to talk about who they are, what they do. And actually I see students make this mistake all the time. Oh my God, this video is going to have a lot of uh, rants, but I really think these rants are like the nuggets. Uh, a lot of people send me messages on LinkedIn all the time and they're like, Hey Ali, long paragraph. This is what I want. What do you think? Like I read that and I'm like, I try to help as much as I can. But then once in a while I get a message on LinkedIn. That's like, Hey Ali, I see that you're working on this antenna thing. What, why are you working on this antenna thing? Or, 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 or what is this antenna actually doing? And usually I can sense if someone's asking out of genuine curiosity or just kind of doing it for, for, for whatever BS reason. And I'm, I notice myself, like I have to stop myself and, and realize I'm like 10 times more likely to reply to that kind of message. And I had to ask why. And the reality is us humans, human nature, we like to talk about our work and we like to share more about our work. If you get 10 or 20 paragraphs each day from potential students telling you why they are special and they're amazing, uh, most employers, recruiters, professors are a lot less likely to respond. Now you can be angry about that and be like, oh my God, humans are so selfish. Like they should take time out of their day and reply to my long message because they should be able to help me. Or you could work with human nature and understand that, okay, people like to work, talk about what, what, they, what, they, what they are working on and they like to uh, do t discuss the things that they're interested in and people are seeking like-minded people and you can just ask them about their work <laughs> and then people are going to be a lot more likely to engage with you in a discussion. Seventh thing I want to talk about is more technical. It's all the different careers you can have and there's actually 15 careers that you can do within electrical engineering and I want to talk to you about 
them in depth. I want to tell you all the technical details, which is why I went ahead and I created another video, which should show up somewhere over here. So you should go ahead and click that and watch it so you can see which subfield is for you. So I will see you over there. Peace, love.